Hello everybody, welcome back to the Speakeasy. I'm Zach. And I'm Jake. We are the Dirt Road Men. This is gonna be a long review. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's way better than those last two. Well, I don't know about way better than the first one, but it's better. It's... You weren't wrong. <laughs> yeah. It's it's way better. It, it has more character. Yes. Should I go through the whole Tom thing, or just... Yeah, I mean... So, we went and toured this distillery before you get rolling, because you didn't... You, this is the write-up before we did, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, there's a new... New-ish distillery, and by new-ish, I mean they're too new to put out their own distilled products yet. Uh, their own distilled whiskey, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, fair enough. Um, they do have a couple other offerings that we almost care about. And... <laughs> uh, they are in the heart of downtown Kansas City. Like, when people think of downtown Kansas City, they think of power and light. It's basically exactly where these guys are. Is that where we were? Yeah. I don't know. I, that was the first time I'd been to Power and Light. Yeah. Um, now, there's a, a certain little section that has like an open area where bands play. Uh -huh. That's where most people are talking about when they say hanging out at Power and Light, but that's all the Power and Light district. Where oh, okay. It's all downtown Kansas City, near the Sports I... Center, stuff like that. Downtown Kansas City is cool looking. Like it when is. I think of Kansas City, I'm thinking of what you see from the highway. And the gunshots you might be hearing from the highway. <laughs> yeah, and the ghetto neighborhoods we've been to. Yeah, but this no. place was cool. They had the cool architecture on some of the mm -hmm. older buildings, and it was just sick. It's a cool place to see. The problem is just that it's usually clustered with people. It wasn't too bad yesterday. But, uh, yeah, go ahead and tell them about it, and then we can talk more about our distillery tour. So this is uh, Tom's Town, and this one is the Pender Pendergast Royal Gold. Yep. Um, Tomstown was uh, founded in 2015 by Steve. Huh? So that put him at about five years old. Yeah, my bad. Um, Steve Rivera and David Epstein. I I don't know if he's related to Jeff, but. Um, and uh, the distillery is named after Tom Pendergast. Pendergast was a very very influential uh, figure for Kansas City, especially during uh, Prohibition. He moved to KC in the late 1800s to work in a bar owned by his brother. In 1911, he opened the T.J. Pendergast Wholesale Liquor Company alongside two of his friends. 2021, KC becomes known as Tomstown. Look at that. Uh, because of Tom's growing political control and influence. And maybe we're not joking about his political control. No, he had 98% uh, of the votes. 94. 94. Yeah. And, and close. when I say when he says that, this guy didn't run for office. No. He could get everyone to vote the way he wanted. He determined who was in power. He had the power over the people in office. They were figureheads for him. <laughs> if I want to hear you talk, I shove my hand up your ass with your mouth like a puppet. Yes, that. Um, 20, 1922, here's a very, very big person who he had uh, puppet control over. He had Harry S. Truman uh, run for a post on the Jackson County Administration Court. And obviously Truman won. Yeah, um, and when you can say that you had political control over Harry S. Truman, a president of the United States, granted, well, not while he was president, mm -hmm. that's saying something. He he started Truman on his bigger political path. I, which means Tom was a Democrat. <laughs> yeah, fair. He did do some pretty negative things, though, so... Yeah. He also did some cool stuff, too. I'm just fucking around. It's a joke. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> um, I also think it's Harry Truman did some cool shit. Like, you know, stop fucking with us, Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Here, have two sons. 
Um, so eventually Tom had enough power in Kansas City to just tell the federal government to just fuck right off with the whole prohibition bullshit. Um, downtown historic Kansas City, there was, I think they said, uh, like 200 speakeasies. They weren't really speakeasies, they were just nightclubs that the government was too afraid to fuck with. <laughs> Why? Because they were Tom's nightclubs. He, and he he didn't own them necessarily, but he backed them. I bet he had to have somebody walk behind him just to carry his nuts in a wheelbarrow. Yeah. <laughs> the, the joke was that uh, Kansas City never saw prohibition. It was never dry. No. Or, correct. No, they never saw prohibition. Um, all this because the people are thirsty. <laughs> that's, the last that's, a, that's a weird way to drive that line in there. Your delivery was off. Yeah. You should have just kept rolling. So, uh, after Prohibition, Tom has Truman run for Senate. And he wins. He put uh, that motherfucker in the Senate. He put him in the Senate. Um, he was forced, in 1939, Pendergast was finally caught for tax evasion. Tax evasion. Uh, he, he was forced to plead guilty, and uh, the next year, Casey's nightlife was just flat. <laughs> yep. So he leaves, and within the year, they're just shut the fuck down. Good fucking degenerates. Drinking at all hours of the day and shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of the story. A rough estimate of the story. Not estimate, uh, summary. Of Pendergast. And Tomstown Distillery. This is the Royal Gold. Um... It's a blend of five-year and seven-year-old bourbons, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Five- and seven-year-old bourbons from? MGP. Yep. Because they are a young, really young distillery. They don't, they're not even, this year would be their fifth year, so they could make half of this. Yeah, and it's five- and seven-year-old bourbons, and how did they put their own spin on it besides blending those two together? I don't remember. Okay, so they blended those two together and they put those motherfuckers in a uh, port wine cask oh. and aged it for a year. Okay. In that port wine cask, which is a much longer finishing process than Angel's Envy uses. Mm -hmm. And this bottle is at least 10 bucks cheaper than I've ever paid for Angel's Envy. Nice. Says the guy that's only ever bought one bottle. Did you buy a bottle of Angel's Envy? I did. Oh. I kept that shit away from you. <laughs> Um, I let a guy at work try it, uh -huh. and it, like, it came back with very little in it. Ah. Oh. And then you, me, and Momo drank out of it at my house once. No. Oh. But, whatever. <laughs> it was not long after you got your bottle, because that was one of the first extra whiskeys we tried, and I was really impressed with it. And I actually like this one better than Angel's Envy. Oh, yeah. Um, I remember, anyway. Yeah, it has been, like, more than a year and a half. No, it's it's been more than two years since I've touched any Angel's Envy. Hmm. So maybe that's not a fair comparison, but... Maybe we should try some compared to this and the Devil's Cut. Why maybe. the Devil's Cut? Because the Angels and the Devils and... Okay. The king. King Tom. Okay. Just for fucking fun, Zach. Just for fun! I just wanted to know why the Devil's Cut needed to be in there. Because Angel's Envy and Devil's Cut. Okay. <laughs> Alright, let's talk about the actual whiskey now. We've told them all about it. Uh -huh. Let's talk about the whiskey for a minute before we get into talking about our tour a little bit. <clears throat> Mm. 
definitely smell that port wine. It you? is. It's right up there with dark fruit notes. Grapes, stuff like that. I mean, obviously. <laughs> um, Grape and cherry on the nose. I do pick up a, uh, a bit of oak. A bit of the oak. Mm -hmm. Grape, cherry, light wood notes on the nose. On the taste, it kind of tastes like it might be a, a somewhat high rye bourbon blend. It doesn't. They don't tell us. Yeah. We don't have mash bills to work with. Which is unfortunate because that would be cool to have to know. But um, there's just something on the finish that that lights the back of my mouth up like rye. It's not mint though. It's closer to that eucalyptus thing rye has going on. But not enough that I would call it eucalyptus. It's weird. It just kind of lifts off and it's really bright and shiny. Nice. I know that... You know what I mean. <laughs> Fresh herb note. Yeah. And then, yeah, on the taste it's like really sweet bourbon. It's nice and smooth and drinkable. That would be, as uh, someone might say, dangerous. Yeah. This um, is, it's very smooth, but very good. Look at me. If anybody from the tribe made it to this video, very smooth. Like if you <laughs> shaved and then greased up a dolphin, smooth. <laughs> Oh, that's why that glass is over here. Mm. I had an idea for a comparison, but we spoiled our other glass. You're like, don't touch my whiskey anymore. <laughs> <laughs> don't dump this one out. Um, we don't have another glass, do we? Okay. Uh, a shot glass. Yeah, I don't want to do it from a shot glass. I think this would be a very good whiskey if you are just getting into trying to drink whiskey neat. Yeah. Even the tour guide basically said that he wouldn't touch the double oaked, which we reviewed fairly well. I think we gave it a seven. Um, it, he wouldn't use it outside of cocktails. This he will drink neat. I actually, uh, the tour wasn't as cool as Rieger's, uh -huh. but our tour guide was a badass compared yeah. to our tour guide at Rieger's. He was super entertaining. He did a really good job with what he was working with. Uh -huh. um, I enjoyed this tour more in the sense of how I felt while it was happening, mm -hmm. but I saw more cool stuff at Rieger's. Yeah, um, I think uh, part of that is Rieger's is generally a larger place. Oh yeah, it's a much larger place. So. But that's because they used to be in two different locations. Uh, and then yeah. they moved into the old bottling place. Yeah. Um, and that's part of the problem. They don't have as much that they can show you. Mm -hmm. But the guy did a good job of making jokes and he didn't fuck up when he was explaining to you how the whiskey worked like our tour guide did at Rieger. Yeah. So... And um, one, sorry, go ahead. You're good. One thing that was really cool is uh, when we brought up uh, where they were sourcing from at Rieger, the guy is kind of backpedaling, kind of trying to defend it. Whereas um, at Tomstown, the guy was like, yeah, obviously we have to. And just kind of like explain like completely everything he knew about uh, what whiskey they were getting from MGP and how they were messing with it to make it their own and, and why yeah. yeah he was totally straight with everybody whereas <clears throat> he, we had to like pull it out from our tour guide at Rieger's um, like they were ashamed of it or something I don't care if you make good whiskey both of the whiskey offerings from Tomstown I think are good I really don't care that you're sourcing it. I know mm. that you're a new whiskey company and you've got to try to make it that's fun um, I do hope to get to try stuff distilled there at these distilleries. That is one thing mm -hmm. I like about Union Horse. Everything you've had from Union Horse was distilled there. Yeah. And so. So far, um, out of the 
three KC whiskeys or Kansas City area whiskeys that we've had, I do think I like the Union Horse better. Yes. Yeah. I, I do too. Um, to be fair, the it is the only one actually distilled in KC also. Um, and it is bourbon and regular Tomstown is bourbon. This is bourbon, but it's finished bourbon. Mm. I don't have a problem with bourbon finishing, but you got to call it something different, which is frustrating. Yeah. Um, I'm struggling where to rate this between two numbers. You between seven and eight? No. Higher? Yeah, I'm between eight and nine. Oh. I think I'm going to land on eight, though. That's where I was thinking. Uh... I do like this better than the double oaked, and I do think mm -hmm. that if you're just trying to get somebody into neat whiskey, this is a wonderful starting point. Uh, also, yeah. I think Tomstown had a lot of balls by spending the money to be in downtown KC because it is absurdly expensive to get there. Oh, yeah. When you get, consider how expensive it is to open a distillery in the middle of an empty field in Kansas... And then compare that to opening a distillery in downtown Kansas City. And trying to fight that business world. I really hope they make it through when whiskey dips. Because we're in a boom right now. Mm -hmm. And I really hope they make it through when whiskey dips. I also like the aesthetic of their bar more than I liked it at Rieger's as well. Yeah. Rieger's was cool because you could look in on the distillery. And, mm. um, they had a slide. Granted, you could look in on the distillery on uh, Tomstown. Yeah. There was a glass wall there. Yeah. But um, Rieger's made it the focal point of the room. Mm -hmm. But Tomstown just had this cool old-time bar feel to it mm -hmm. that I really liked. Also, the bartender was much better looking. We had a big bearded guy at uh, Rieger. We had a nice blonde lady at... <laughs> yeah, Tom's yeah. town. <laughs> really friendly, yeah. really cute. I wasn't trying to make you dive under the bus or nothing. No. The bartender that was uh, I felt was I and me was, uh, he had a uh, long, curly, like, black hair, and it was kind of <laughs> weird for me. <laughs> I forgot about that. That's great. <sighs> but, yeah, um... I really liked the Tomstown Distillery. I wish I could remember the name of our tour guide. You guys should never fire that dude. Um, give him a raise. Yeah. I don't know how much he makes, but give him a raise. Yeah. If he's not making six figures, bump that guy up. And even if he is, uh, do it anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm in an eight with this. I, I like Tomstown. I'm happy with the distilleries I've had in Kansas City. I do like Tomstown better than the J. Rieger. This. Mm-hmm. Same. So. All right. I don't think I have anything else to add. I'm sure we've rambled on for like 20 minutes at this point. Probably. I don't have anything else either. All right. Till we see you again, I'm Zach. And I'm Jake. We are the Dirt Road Men. If you like this video, uh, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, drop us a comment, and check out our uh, Facebook page for daily updates.